dot com. Word. Yes. Yes, we're ready to roll. <clears throat> okay, so on page seven, we're going to sing a song. The words might look familiar a little bit, and the tune might not be, but it goes together beautifully. It's a beautiful tune that I like to sing. And just um, what. Shabbos songs are very beautiful, and it's really important to to get an idea or an essence of what we're singing as we sing it. We may not look at the words of every word we sing, but it's important to have a, an idea of what we're doing when we're singing a song, so we can direct and focus our consciousness. And I was thinking before I was. Um, Looking for a way to to have easy access to a core a core experience and not have to almost like search for it anew every time, but just really have a homing device within me that goes exactly where I need to be and where exactly where I need to to go to my center and um, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about that tonight of how we can all do that and if anybody has any ideas and experiences. So this song, as the introduction says, Kari Bon, was <coughs> composed by Rabbi Yisrael Najara, Halevi, 1530. The initial letters of each five of the five stanzas form the cross of Yisrael. And so besides alluding to the author's name, these stanzas teach that Israel's purpose, the praise of Hashem, is fivefold. So he gives like uh, a meaning to Yisrael in terms of the Yud and the the Sin and the Resh and the Aleph and the Lamed. Each letter now becomes the beginning of a, of, of a concept, of an idea. And all together, it all fits together. So one, we we recognize him as the master of miracles. The word in, in air, the, the song is actually in Aramaic. It's very interesting. He's in Sfat in the 1530s, and uh, that's when the Ari was there, and with Yosef Karo, and all these masters. And the, the the language of the Zohar was was alive for them. They spoke Hebrew, but they they knew Aramaic. They were almost like reincarnations. It was said that the Ari was a reincarnation of Shimon Bar Yochai. And his students were reincarnations of the students of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Whether it was literal or just that they wanted to embody those energies. So it doesn't matter. So the idea here in the first line is Yari von Alam Ve'almaya Antu Malka Menach Malachaya Ovad Givotech V'Timhaya the line is from Daniel, basically. It's based in the book of Daniel. Ovad givurtech v'timhaya. The um, powerful miracles and supernatural wonders. Timhaya are things that, that bring you to, to wonderment, astonishment. Givurtech are supernatural miracles also, or powerful miracles. So the first stanza of Yisrael is that Yisrael represents the level of recognizing God as his miracles <coughs> behind all creation. And that and the the, the the carriers of that of that consciousness. Please welcome Shit. The second stanza is the stanza of nature. As the creator and overseer of the laws of nature. Become that once you have miracle, you know what miracle is then you have to live in your in your everyday life. And it shouldn't be like almost as if it's dichotomous. It has to be that the, 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 the reason that we experienced the miracle was so that we could then come into our everyday life and see that our everyday life was not what we think it is. It's really also a miracle. So that's another... So those two ways that we see God, that we praise Hashem, is for His miracles and for the world of nature, which is really hidden miracles. As we know from Esther, the book of Esther, and the Purim story, and the holiday of Purim, so when you recognize the hidden miracles of Purim, 
when you see that behind the scenes of the whole Megillah, there was a there was a choreographer leading and directing the scenes. It was completely unbeknownst to anybody in the in, in the story, but but there was a choreographer there. So then that when you recognize that that level of of miracle is there, hidden behind the scenes or the events of history, then that becomes the stepping stone, the springboard for the revealed miracles of Passover. Even though, of course, the, two, the, time, the timing is, is different. The Passover is the beginning of the holiday year, in a sense, and Pesach, Purim is the end. P Pesach had m happened much before, and Purim happened much after. But just in terms of, of the year, we're starting now on Friday and Saturday, Purim Aleph, Adam, Adar Aleph, and there'll be another month and a half until we get to you Purim Shani. There'll be two Purims this year. But whatever the case, the Purim is a, is a, is a, is a, is a spiritual experience. The recognition of Hashem's hand behind the scenes of our lives is the fertile ground for welcoming, for allowing open miracles. And you see, oh, good, I like it. You see, you're starting to see, you're starting to see it's not things just happen. So now I will, be, I will do open miracles because you recognize me through the hidden miracles that I do. So that's one and two on page seven of the songbook. Hi. And number three, the third way we praise Hashem is for as the director of human history. Mm -hmm. So there's the laws of nature, what I was just mixing the two, but it's really two things. There's nature. It's easier to see God in nature than it is to see God in history. That's a little more, more difficult. That's what Paro's problem was. He could see, he could admit that there's an Elohim. But a Yudke Vavke, one who directs human history, after all, there's free will. And once there's free will, it's much more difficult to see that there's any kind of guidance of human history. If human people have, human, if people have free will, so what could God do? He can interfere with free will. Or what he can do is from behind the scenes, again, similarly to what we said, he can, he can direct events unbeknownst to the characters in the play, he can be basically like Rabbi, Rabbi Kaplan spoke about the master chess player who can maneuver the men on, his, on the board and even his opponent's men because he's such a mastery of the, of, of the game. So the, the, we have total free will, but the master chess player, he's able to maneuver our men. He's able to use our free will in, to, bring it, to bring about his, his ultimate plan. He's sneaky like that. Mm -hmm. Even the bad guys then become part of God's plan. Unwillingly, unwittingly. No, that's the last thing we want to do is to play part of God's plan. <laughs> okay. I just want to send around the bag. Sorry, guys, but you were. You want to have a um, $10 minimum donation if anyone wants to put in and send it around. Please put in before you leave tonight. Thank you. So we're just on page seven of the songbook. Whoever doesn't have one, raise your hand or raise your eye, your eyebrows. <laughs> okay. And there's books over there. Okay, you got one. Page seven of the song. We're just gonna sing a song, the famous Kari Bone, but we just wanted like you know like a little bit of appreciation for what the song is before we started. So the fourth way of appreciating God is for His special supervision over the people of Israel in exile. That's when it gets really deep. That in the midst of exile and when we're forlorn and forsaken and we feel like everything is like overwhelming and we're under the dominion or the, of an empire or of our civilization, that really Hashem's providence is with us even more than under normal circumstances. That... How do we get? To, how do we explain that? I don't, I don't even know. I just want to say that right now. That's all I want to say. And the fifth 
level is for his promise of ultimate redemption. It's not really a fifth level. It's that what grows out of all of this is uh, the last stanza is about that it's that maybe we can't understand it while it's all happening. We can't understand verses 2, 3, and 4, which is nature, history, and the history of Israel in exile, until it's all over, until the redemption comes, and then we'll look back and see that God was the God of nature, God was the God of history, and God was the God of Israel, and that all of history revolved around Israel. There are a number of psalms around that. Around that. So, but no further ado, let's sing the song. It's a very special, sweet Iraqi tune from Baghdad. But <clears throat> as with all the songs, I slow them down and they become more like Pete Seeger. Okay. Na, 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 na. Oh, na, na. Oh, 